Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Enchanted Forest, Graphic 45's uh, latest re-release of um, this collection. So it is a deluxe, it's a collector's edition. I guess they dropped the deluxe part because they don't do the chipboard anymore. At any rate, um, we're going to go ahead and get started on the cover. So what I've done on the cover is... And I'm using the 8x8 DCE here. Is I took this 8x8 and then I cut the inside out. So now I have a frame. So it went from that to this. Did I get that right? No, sorry. This came from the 12x12. 12 12. So sorry, I had to had to redo my measurements. So this is the 12x12. 12 12. I cut the frame out, and then you can see that I mitered the corners. So I made the um the actual outside border a little bit smaller and created this frame. So that is going to be on the base of our cover. Now on the back side, and so I overcut it just a little bit so I could wrap it. On the back side, I put two layers of chipboard, two layers of chipboard. So it's going to stand out quite a bit. Then I brought in the eight by eight of the same image and it's going to become the background of this. So it's going to have a slight elevation here. And you'll see why in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get started by applying the frame to the 8x8 and then we'll take this collectively and add it to the cover. So the other thing I want to mention is this is based on the 8.5x8.5x2.5 by by inch album. But I made it a little bit smaller to accommodate this frame size, and I mean a little bit smaller. So instead of eight and a half by eight and a half, it's eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths, and it just worked out better with this frame. Everything else about the album is exactly the same as the eight and a half by eight and a half. So only the cover, is, the cover spine and back are um, slightly adjusted. So I basically took an eighth inch off instead of eight and four eighths or eight and a half it's eight and three eighths in height and width and then this is two and a half by eight and three eighths okay so it's very small and then the the pages inside are eight by eight same as same as always <clears throat> okay I think I actually am going to put the glue on here. So it's important to get your glue all the way out to the edge. It's going to be inset on the back of this, and you'll see that in just a minute. I'm going to make it a mess. Okay. I'm going to stand up so I can look down on this. And this should go and cover that red part. Is going to be replaced by the larger. Okay, there we go. Okay, now this whole piece is going to be added here. And it's going to come all the way out on all the edges. And if you did 8.5 by 8.5, what it would just mean is you'd have a very small black border. And that works too.
Okay, while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and add some clips, hold everything in place. Especially on the corners. <clears throat> like it needs to be pushed down just a little bit. Clamps are almost too small. go. I'm going to set that aside. And then um, when I come back, we are going to add some additional embellishments to the front. I did a ton of fussy cutting. So just to give you a preview and to let you know that the fussy cutting came from two different places. This came from the 12 by 12. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than this. This came from the 8 by 8. And this also came from the 8x8. So these two I'm going to pop, but not enlarge. And then this piece over here I'm going to enlarge. And then there's the rest of this. This also came. So I want to give you guys a tip. I um, had been layering glue on these um, pieces to stiffen them up a little bit. That's what I traditionally do. But one of the things I didn't like about that process is everything felt sticky. Um, and one of the things I'm going to do inside the album is some pop-ups. And because I'm going to do some pop-ups, it's really important, especially if it's layered, that they're not sticky. So I did some research and figured out that you can actually use spray starch, the same kind of starch that you use for your clothing, and spray your um, paper and then either let it dry for 24 hours or hit it with um, um, air, like a, your blow dryer. Not necessarily heat, just air, um, so that it'll dry faster. And you coat the front and the back, and you continue to coat the front and the back and let it dry between coats until you get it as stiff as you want. And it's amazing. It is not sticky. And it is definitely stiffening up the paper, and that saves me a lot of time in terms of trying to add black paper behind it to stiffen it up or even use glue because um, glue is sticky. Even, you know, art glitter glue still remains a little bit tacky when you touch it. So um, I thought that was a great tip. I'm glad I found that out. That's probably going to become uh, one of my standard methods for stiffening up the paper on the cover. So one of the things I got to find out is if it's pH balanced um, for the inside of the album, but for the outside of the album, I'm not concerned about that. I don't usually have an image on my cover. It's usually just um, chipboard and paper. So um, I'm going to, like I said, set this aside, take a break. When I come back, we will continue to add designer elements to the cover, but that is the beginning. And again, I made that slight adjustment to the chipboard pieces instead of eight and a half, it's eight and three eighths. So, and again, as a reminder, two layers of chipboard behind the frame. So it's extra popped. Okay. I'll be back soon. Oops, I forgot to push um, record. So <laughs> I went ahead and, and added this enchanted forest layer. So you can kind of see that it's popped up. Now what I'm gonna do with the elements that I'm adding right now is just add a single layer of chipboard. So it's still gonna sit below the plane of the frame, uh, which will help protect it. Um, but I think it also makes it look more interesting. So that's my little spacer, my my iPod container. Actually, this one works better. It's almost perfectly two and a half inches. It's my old uh, iWatch box, which I can't bring bring myself to get rid of, even though I don't use it for its purpose. Okay, so I added Enchanted Forest. So again, that was fussy cut from the 8x8 of the same image here. This is um, been fussy cut from the 8x8 image as well. And I'm kind of going back and forth about um, whether or not to 
remove, you know, take fussy cut her arm out, but I think I'm going to leave it as is um, because I think that her hand is so delicate, it's very likely to get stuck on something. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding my chipboard. I like to cut these super thin strips off of larger sheets and then have these set aside for some of the very small pieces. And then I've just got some other pieces. Now you can use foam also. Um, I pr If you want to keep your weight down, use foam. Foam. I prefer the chipboard. It's stiffer. It just seems to be more protective in general. So I'm going to use my chipboard. And I'm going to continue to cut. I'm going to use a different pair of scissors. Cut these down so that they, they fit. Let's try this this way. It's just a little bit too tall. Now I cut her her arm out because I wanted this cut out right here. So I am going to put this back together and I'm going to use this piece of chipboard to hold it in place. It's just a little tiny detail that's going to um, make it stand out or make it look more dimensional um, once, once this is added, having those little background pieces take it out. Okay. Very good. I'm going to cut some. Let's see. This. No, it's about the same size. Hopefully I'm in screen. This is all kind of boring stuff, so I'm probably going to double time this. Maybe not. But you get the gist, and then I'm going to be doing this on a couple of other pieces, which I may do offline to save you the tedium. Now this is, oops, I bumped that out of the way. You apply that. This is um, a good spot where I can use this really thin trim piece to go up behind her head. And help hold that in place and I'm also going to try to put something slightly up here to hold some of these um, I don't know what they call these spheres not sphere um, steeples I guess I'm not really sure I know that's what you call it when it's a church. <laughs> I don't know what you call it when it's a castle. Now this, um, I went ahead and starched it and let it dry front and back. That way I had tested it. I had tried a couple of different things. They say Mod Podge will stiffen it too, but I, you get the same result. Mod Podge is essentially glue, right? Um, it's a some liquid polymer kind of thing. So it remains tacky too. If there's any humidity in the air, you can you can feel it, right? So I was trying to stay away from that. So the starch seems to be great. It doesn't alter the um, the color uh, either. As, well, actually, it makes it look a little bit richer, very slightly. Um, but it does. It, there's no shine to it. It's just a little bit um, stiffer. That's all. All good. Okay, that's my last piece. Turn it over. Make sure none of my um, card or chipboard is showing. I don't see any. So let's go ahead and add this. I like to keep a very small gap uh, along the edges, and the reason I do that is as I'm embellishing, further embellishing the project, 
if I want to tuck something behind it, I can without running into the chipboard. Okay, so we're just going to add this right on top, like so, to give us that little bit more dimension. And it, you can see that cutting that little piece out just really helps you see the dimension. Okay, I'm gonna hold that place for just a second. So we have the title and now we have her. Um, this is not inked and not starch. So I'm gonna go away and do that, but that is gonna go here. And I want that to pop out. So I'm trying to decide right now whether or not I want it to be taller than the, um, the Enchanted right here, but it's gonna go basically right on top and be elevated. Now for over here, this is inked and it is starched and it is awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do another uh, test piece to see if I can actually tear it because it feels, it feels like it wouldn't tear. It feels very strong. Anyways, this is gonna go here. Now what I'm going to do on this, I think that's probably okay to go ahead and remove, is I'm gonna overlap this wing probably both wings up here in the corner. So I'm gonna offset this monster a little bit so you can see the other one behind it. And part of the reason I wanna do that is actually make it look like there's two um, as part of the image. Now the question is where do I wanna place him, right? So his head could actually go on top of the forest. No, I don't like that. I wanna be able to see the T. I definitely want his wing off the um, on the frame and not off the edge. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So you can see the double there. So this is where I'm gonna lay them. The body is gonna go down here. The wings are gonna come up here. So now that we're looking at it, we know basically the wings will have nothing behind them. They'll get glued directly to the frame. And then from the wings down, we're gonna put one layer of chipboard. So basically, we're gonna use that as our guide, these two wings, and then we're gonna put chipboard pieces down here. Again, you can use foam if you prefer. I, I just happen to really like um, the, the firmness of the, um, the chipboard pieces. Foam is fine too. I, I do prefer to use foam on cards, and the reason is it helps you keep your weight down. In an album, you are not worried about weight. Everything is so heavy in your album already. It's not like you're going to save much by adding foam to the cover. Okay. Now, once I'm done, I'm gonna flip it over and if any of this chipboard is showing uh, beyond the edge, I will make adjustments. I wanna be careful with these horns and with um, the beak or whatever, you call, the mouth, because they're very pointy. Remember, the wings are gonna be mostly on the frame, so those points are gonna be protected because they'll be laying flat. Maybe. A little bit more down here. Even thinner if I can get it. The scissors don't like that. The other thing you can do here on these really tiny spots, which is what I think I'm going to do, is just put a dot of glue and let it dry in a hump, and then that becomes the elevation there. So I think I'm going to do that there, focus on the rest of this, because that's just too thin to cut. I 
hope everybody's doing good. I was really inspired by this collection. Um, there is a Russian designer who did something when this was originally a new collection. And, oh my gosh, her work is exquisite. So when I saw it, I was like, ah, she's, I got so inspired by her talent and, uh, just what she did with this collection. I was really, I'm pumped up about this. There's a ton of fussy cutting, um, but it's so worth it. <laughs> Um, and we're going to have some fussy cutting on the inside too because I'm going to do some pop-ups. So there will be fussy cutting. Hey, I'm curious. Is anybody out there using a Brother Scan and Cut? Um, I'd like to hear from you. I use Silhouette and um, I've never tried the Brother, but it looks easier. So I can do a Scan and Cut with Silhouette, but it's a two-step process. Um, so what I'm interested in doing, sorry, I was trying to get my thoughts together. What I want to know is if you have a brother, could you scan this and just cut out Enchanted Forest and just cut out this element or this element, even though there's all this background? I know part of it is it thrives just like Silhouette does on contrast. So one of the things I really love about graphic is they almost always outline everything in black. So there is a black line here. What I'm curious about, now here's an example of where there isn't, right? It's just the color of her dress. What I'm curious about is if that's enough for a scan and cut to pick up. If it is, I know where my next $400 is going. If it's not, then uh, I'm back to fussy cutting. It would be nice to get this result without as much effort. Um, I don't mind fussy cutting, uh, except for schedule, right? It's just slow. Um, and uh, because I'm trying to get out a couple a month, um, it's hard on the hands uh, if you do two fussy cut albums in one month, but also it's slow, it's very slow. Not just the cutting part, but even just the inking part, trying to get and all those weird edges, which if you, here's a bit of advice if you're new. If you haven't started inking, don't. <laughs> because once you start, you don't go back. <laughs> and it's a time consuming process on a fussy cut item. But I just, I personally just can't stand the white core. It's a personal thing. If I never would have seen it inked, I never it would never have bothered me. <laughs> and in fact, the, the uh, I'm going to leave a link to the album that has such so inspired this. And I actually had sent a note to her. She's she's Russian, so I'm not sure. I tried to send it to her in, in Russian, but we'll see how my translation did. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave a link to her her um, her video because it's just so beautiful and uh if you enjoy this at all you definitely like seeing hers i don't know if she speaks on it um because i don't speak russian so i didn't have the volume on i was just looking at it and it is a masterpiece okay one teeny tiny little piece here she was a ambassador for graphic at some point i don't know if it was during this this era of this original release for Enchanted Forest, or if it was before or after, but, um, and I, I didn't see anything new on her channel in the last three years, so I'm not sure she even makes scrapbooks anymore, but I tried to see if she sold, um, tutorials or something, and I, I, I didn't have any luck, but I'm not much of an expert in terms of searching around on foreign, uh, social media platforms. Okay, I'm just testing to see if I need any more. I need a little bit more chipboard right there. Let's see if that's going to do it. I think it is. Yeah. I just want to be careful. It's easy enough to peel it up if you overdo it um, because the chipboard wants to come apart in layers when you start peeling it. So I wouldn't panic if you, if you feel like you put too much chipboard. You can always peel it back pretty easy and just leave a thin layer. Oops, I forgot his nose had glue on it. What do you guys think? Isn't that awesome? 
I really love it. Okay, now this one looks a little bit sh uh, shiny because I had done glue first, and then I, got, I ran into that, wow, it's really tacky. So then I starched it, and just adding starch to the glue um, took a lot away of the tackiness, took a lot of the tackiness away. Wow, I said that weird. Um, so it's good. So I'm going to go ahead and add those three dots again, set this aside, let it dry, and then we'll be ready to add it to the cover. And so the last thing I was thinking about doing on the cover is the night. So I don't know if I want to pop him or if I just want to add some kind of glossy accent to him. And when I say glossy accent, I don't mean the, the brand. I just mean a, a high shine um, it, uh, medium, uh, whether it's glue or something else, I don't know. Um, I just think it would be kind of cool with the armor. So I may do that. So I'm just adding a thick layer of glue here so that, and I just kept adding glue until it came up to the same level as the chipboard. Okay, now I'm gonna set this aside so it will not be disturbed um, until it's dry. And then, yeah, I'll take my clips off and when we come back, we'll finish the cover. And then I think that's all I'm gonna do on the cover. At least that's what I think for right now. All right, I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, I'm back and I've got my piece and it's dry. Let me get my thing in here. Okay, let's go ahead and lay this puppy down. And then we still have to do the enchanted, which I was waiting for it to dry with the starch. And I think I'm just about there. Okay. Alrighty, I need something like some tweezers. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Try not to get the top of my head in, but it's kind of a challenge. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna set that back a little bit more because I do want the tea in the forest to show. Okay, so let's see about the Enchanted. I think it's stiff enough, so now I need to add some chipboard to it. Remember for each of these um, raised elements, they're a single level, that's a double level. <clears throat> Thank you. 
All right, I got a jet. I got to go get my dog. She's knocking at the door. Be right back. All righty. I think I've got... Just about got this done. I'm going to put a little something up there. <laughs> Good grief. That way. Nope. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to call that done. We're going to apply it right over the existing print. I added ink around my edges. And I starched the paper. I'm doing it slightly uh, above the print so you get that little bit of a, a hint of the pattern underneath. I've got a little excess glue here. Let's use that to scrape it up. And then her foot is under, so I'm going to switch that so it is slightly over. Okay, that is my cover. And it looks like I need to add a little glue here so that doesn't get snagged on anything. Everything else feels pretty secure. But I'm just going to go around and add a dot here or there to make sure there's no pointy items sticking out that are going to get snagged. Everything else feels pretty pretty good. I'm still thinking about um, the soldier, um, about whether or not I want to do uh, an image on top of the soldier. So that may change, um, but for now I'm going to call the cover finished. Hey everyone, um, while I was away I went ahead and covered or started to cover the back and I'm going to show you what I did which is similar to this. So basically I did um, another inlaid square, um, but right now there's nothing in behind it. So the way I put this together is the same way I put this together. The difference being this is two layers of chipboard and on this side I put one layer. So this is slightly receded. Um, so you can see on the side that, that this is laying in fact on a piece of chipboard so it is slightly wrapped around the edge. This is double chipboard, single chipboard. Now I'm working on the spine and it's going to be single chipboard. Now I'm out of this trim which I want to replicate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these strips and put them together in the same sequence to recreate that over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these together in order and I'm going to put some tape on the background and then I'm going to trim it to fit. And the tape is just going to be regular tape. I'm actually, I think, going to use this construction tape. And that's just to hold everything in order so that I can uh, put it up against the spine, which I use the uh, tape for to trim the edges instead of wrapping it with um, cardstock. So the edge of it will be black. I, because I don't have enough to wrap around like I did on both the front and the back. So, that being said, this is the order they're going to be in. And these just were border strips off, off of, uh, let me show you, one of the cut apart pages uh, of the 12 by 12. 
so it's not, it's not that one. Which one is it? Oh, good grief. It's this one, I think. Nope, it's not that one, so it must be... So there's this stripe right here, and of course, it's this page also, so all you need to do is cut a, a half inch and center, center the print. And then this came off of um, the back side of the cover, so it's just a one square. And then this came off of, what did that come off of? It had to have come off the frame. I believe that, yeah, it came off the 12 by 12 frame. So you get three of these. Two of them covers the front and back, and the third one um, is going to be for, and I cut it apart like this because I didn't realize how I was going to use it. So um, if, if you didn't do what I did, you should be able to get two of these already basically intact um, off two sides and then be able to trim it to fit on here. But I had kind of cut it all apart. So again, you get three of each pattern. Two, if you cut the inside out of the first two, that gets you the front and the back, and then the third one gets you the spine. All right, let's get going. So I'm going to flip these all over in the order they're in and tape them together so that I can get this trimmed right. And I'm sure it's going to be a little bit easier said than done. And then when I once I get it rough trimmed, then I'm going to um, take the tape off and I'm going to apply these individually. I think that's my current plan. But as we go along, that may change slightly. Okay, that looks pretty good. I should have prepped, I should have had my tape ready. Hopefully you uh, won't have to go through this process. You'll just have two strips that you need to trim to fit. And I am gonna miter the edges, which adds a little bit of complexity. You don't have to, but I just really like the look. And it's consistent with the front and back. Okay, so I'm gonna... Take this down and then I'm gonna trim a straight edge here. And that'll give us the, the beginning. Whoops. You have to have a, a nice straight edge to do your mitered corner. Otherwise, you don't get a good um, 45 degree angle. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use my metal ruler. straight against my, let's see if I can't scoot that over. I'm lining it up with the grid on the, um, on my desk. There we go. And I'm just going to hand trim the bottom. It's really raining cats and dogs here in San Diego. To trim very clean. Might be time for a new blade. Much better. Okay. I like the cork because it doesn't slip, but I don't like the fact that it creates a gap between the edge of what you're trimming and um, 
and the ruler because it's easy for your blade to go slightly under or slightly out I don't like that so sometimes I'll flip it around and uh, use the other side but you got to be careful because it is slippery okay so that's that this is going to be edge to edge so I'm going to put a pencil mark here and trim this side Oh, good grief. <laughs> Couldn't pick that up. And I'm going to take this and just move it closer to me. Turn it upside down. You always want to bring your trim line to you instead of trying to reach over it, if possible. And I've got this beautiful line here. And I just realized if I do this, I'm, I'm thinking about the mitered corner. I'm not sure I'm going to have enough. Oops, this is working hard. Let me draw it on, on here. That's my 45 degree angle. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have enough paper to do a mitered edge. Let me think about that a little bit. I've got to answer text also. Be right back. Okay, everyone, I'm back. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I haven't decided if I'm going to miter. I've got to piece some things together to make that happen. If you hadn't cut through your paper like I had, you might not have to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down on the spine as is. Um, and then uh, later on when I've got a little bit of time, I may come back and put that miter piece in. And if I do, I'm just going to lay it right on top. Um, so, you know, it would just go right on top of what's here. Of course, it would go that way, right? Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to give that some thought. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and add this as is and then attach it to the book. And then... We will be done with the spine unless I come back and do and make that small change. If you have the paper, if you have enough paper to miter, I would recommend doing that. I think it would look better. And I'm sure I've got it. I just, I'm going to have to piece it together. And that's very time consuming. But it will, it'll be worth it. So this album, um, most of the complexity is coming from... Uh, the fussy cutting. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fussy cutting. As you can see, we did some dimension on the cover, and then inside the book, we're going to do some pop-ups. So uh, not a lot of flips, flaps, some pockets, and some pop-ups. And we're going to make a couple of little small journals, too, with some of the cut aparts as the covers um, so that you can do some journaling in it. I think this is going to wind up being a really fun album. It is very specific. Um, it would be great if you know anybody who's into cosplay or um, just any of the fantasy type um, genre, uh, which I know lots of people are. So, you know, if you if you had a watch party or something like that around um, some of these themes, I could even see, I know it's not... Um, Uh, what's the word? Uh, what am I thinking of? The um, Harry Potter, but it's kind of along the same lines in terms of period. 
So like if you had a Disneyland trip, you could easily put any anything that you did at um, that part of Disneyland, or if you focused on that part of Disneyland, this would make for a great trip album. So yeah, okay, well, I'm just uh, knocking off the white core from the edge, not very successfully. I need to re-ink my <clears throat> sponge here. There we go, much better. I don't know why I didn't do that before I laid it down. My mistake. Um, and then again, I may come back and add that miter later, but we're gonna call the cover finished. We'll start focusing on the inside of that after we get this on. Okay, so this is just gonna go right here. get all the way to the edge whoops and this is going to meet uh, edge to edge Okay, again, one layer of chipboard, one layer of chipboard, two layers of chipboard. And that's because I wanted to pop some stuff inside of it and have it still lay slightly below the frame, the, um, the frame level. Okay, sorry, I bumped my head on the, um, the camera there. Okay, I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to put a couple of clips on it, hold it in place, and then when we come back in a few minutes, we'll start working on um, the inside liners for this album. I'll be back soon. All right, everyone. Well, I couldn't stand it. So while I was away, I went ahead and pieced together. So it's actually multiple pieces, just like I did on the side. Taped the back together to hold it all in one piece and then cut um, my mitered corners and then just applied it straight on top. And I think it looks beautiful. I think it, uh, I think it makes a big difference. It's fussy, but I think it makes a lot, um, it makes the, the front back and, um, center all flow together nice and neatly so i'm pleased it was a little bit of work but i'm i'm glad i took the time to go ahead and do it okay next time we get together we'll work on the inside be back soon good morning everyone it's daphne from scrap and create and we're going to work on the inside liners of enchanted forest and these are going to be pretty simple but i think they're going to look really pretty so these are from the eight by eight pack, and I cut the centers out of um, both of these. This was the, the sort of cover signature page, so I cut the center out of both. I'm gonna set those aside. And um, we are going to, I already inked these, lay these on a mat. I'm gonna do the same for the front and back. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well. I can see our weather is starting to take a change, a turn. We're supposed to start getting some rain tomorrow or Tuesday. Yesterday was so pretty. Like a regular spring day. Chill in the air, but no clouds. Hey, um, I'm kind of curious if you guys would respond in the comments. Do any of you go to scrapbook retreats? And if you do, do you have a favorite? If you'd list that in the comments, um, I'm going to start doing more of that. And um, I do go to some here in San Diego that I really like, but it wouldn't 
would be kind of fun to travel and try some different things as well. And also, I'd like to hear anybody's feedback on doing craft cruises, if they like that or if it was just not really worth it. I could, I could see getting mixed reviews on that. <clears throat> Trying to decide, am I going to craft or am I going to be a tourist? <clears throat> and I also, it's hard for me to imagine what the craft room layout would look like. Um, so if, if you guys could give me some feedback on that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so I rotated this frame around. There's a little bit of the image that comes over on this corner, and I wanted it on the lower corner. I think I might put... Um, like a slight embellishment over it, and I wanted it on the corner, not up in the top. Okay, so now we've got this in, and that looks lovely, right? So now we're gonna add a simple flap. This is six and a half by six, and it's gonna fit right inside here. And I need to add my tape. <clears throat> and you can see I'm still in my jammies, <laughs> or in my robe. <laughs> Snuggly crafting in my PJs. Working on my second cup of coffee. I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited about doing a, a page. I just kept running it over and over in my mind. Not this one, but one we're going to work on later. Okay, here it is. I, was, I couldn't uh, find my tape tape tool. Okay, so now uh, on the front cover, I want it to open to the left, and on the back corner, I want it to open to the right. So basically, they're both going to open away from the spine. <clears throat> Just gives you a little more room to appreciate the page. Okay, there we go. We'll do the same thing over here. Now, because I'm using eight eight inch pieces, they're gonna have a little bit more of a border. And remember in the beginning I told you I did my cover a little bit smaller than eight and a half, it's eight and three eighths instead of eight and four eighths. So um, you're gonna see a big, a bigger border around this, but okay, it's okay. It, it'll be consistent with the pages. But I usually scale up um, whatever I'm doing on the front and back cover. <clears throat> so it's a little bit bigger than whatever I put on the pocket pages. It's drying too fast. <clears throat> okay, and there's that little bit of the design that comes out over the frame, and I wanted it on the lower right-hand side. So we are good to go. Okay, and then I have another, I thought, here it is. Now again, this is going to go on the right hand side. Done with my glue, so I'll find the cap. Okay, now we're gonna um, add a magnet closure.
Okay, so this is going to go in the back. We're just looking for an even border around these two corners. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to add a magnet here and then add it to page and then we'll decorate our flag. And of course we want it to open away from the spine. some paper for these. I'm going to have a little coffee and when I come back we will decorate these. Okay everyone I'm back. I chose my papers and I went ahead and finished the back side and we're going to build the front side together. So I used this for the cover and then I use this for the inside. I think it's really pretty. I think it'll make for um, uh, a nice photo mat, uh, both front and back. So let's go ahead and get started laying this stuff down. <clears throat> this is from the 8x8, and this <clears throat> black and cream is from the 12x12. 12 12. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice this morning. Whenever there's a change in the weather, it does that. <clears throat> This is such a pretty collection. I really enjoyed working with this. I wish I would have been able to work with it when um, it first came out and you got all the extra goodies. Um, like the patterns and solids would have been nice to have. <clears throat> but there's plenty in this collection. It just would have been, it's, it's really becoming one of my favorites. It's very, very fun to work with. Although, as an album, it is very specific, so I guess you could use it for European travel or anybody who's into, like, cosplay or period um, pieces. <clears throat> Let's see if I can make these match. Close enough. Again, these came from the 12 by 12. I don't even know why I try.
Okay, and there's our inside liners. Isn't that elegant? I love it. Okay, <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and install page one uh, so we can walk through the installation process, and the rest I'm going to install offline, uh, which is what I normally do. I either don't install any or I install one, and then you have to uh, sort of follow that. But I have to figure out where I put my finished page. <clears throat> here it is. Okay. Way over here. Okay, so that's page one, <clears throat> and this looks naked. I'm gonna have to put something down there. I just don't know what. Probably a, a fussy cut item. Okay, let me slip this over my hinge. <clears throat> like so. Then we like I like to lay it down, and I'm looking for an even border on top and bottom. <clears throat> and that looks really good. So I'm gonna hold that in place. Use my pick tool to pull out the uh, tape. Double check, make sure it didn't slip while I was poking around in there. <clears throat> okay, so there's page one, half in. I'll get the tape on the other side. <clears throat> Voila. Okay, I will be back soon with a complete walkthrough. So I'm gonna go offline and go ahead and put the rest of these back or in, and I'm probably gonna add a couple of little bits here and there just to make it a little more interesting. Maybe I can just put a couple of little stamps right there. That's it, good enough. Let's add some ink and put it down. It just looks naked. Uh, ink. Face peeking out a little bit. I don't plan to put anything under this, so I'm just adding glue all over. <clears throat> there we go. I like it. Okay, be back soon. Oops, I closed it and I just remembered I haven't done anything here. <laughs> I should probably do that. Let's get. Um, if I'm going to say the cover's finished, right? Oh, let's see. <clears throat> <clears throat> I like this red, but <clears throat> I'm not sure it works because this looks so orange. So I'm going to set that aside. Now this is from the 12 by 12. Remember, I cut the frame down. We went over that in another video. <clears throat> Maybe this black. Do I make four? And I think I've got, yeah, I've got this. Hmm, what do you guys think? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. <clears throat> Get my stack of eight by eights here. I do like this, but we've already done it twice on the inside. I like that too. That may be the answer. Yikes, that's too bright. I don't like it. <clears throat> this green just doesn't, it's not the right green. <laughs> this is another one that would probably work. This is it. This is what we're gonna do. Okay, so this is gonna be slightly inset, so you're gonna definitely need to trim this to fit. <clears throat> so I'm gonna rough cut it, and then we're gonna trim it, trim it until we get it just right. <clears throat> I 
did that and then I lost my pencil mark right away. There it is. Is almost pretty enough to be the front <laughs> okay so it's not it's not perfectly square and it would have been easier to put this down and then add the frame but I really didn't know what I was going to do here so I'm slightly out of order so I need to cut this at an angle <clears throat> Oh, uh, no, not right now. Okay, I'll be back in about an hour or less. Okay. All right, that was my husband. He's just me to go run some errands. So that leaves us to finish this. Okay, it looks like I need to trim that just a tiny bit and a little bit off the top. He went jeeping yesterday, and um, I think I mentioned that in one of my other videos. <laughs> because of all the rain, oh my gosh, the jeep is so dirty. But he had fun. It's his thing. I can't do it. It's um, it's too much car time for me. Okay, a little bit more. And I have a tendency to get car sick, which. That's no fun when you don't feel good and you can't get out of the vehicle and get fresh air. There we go, look at that. Oh, it's all in, so I'm going to pop it back out and we're gonna add some glue. And that is the back and it's beautiful. So there's the back, the front, the spine, which I'm very pleased with, and the inside. Ooh, this is turning out to be such a lovely album. Okay, let me pop this out, get it glued down and then the next time we get together, I promise you we will actually be doing a walkthrough. <laughs> it's a fun album, fun. <clears throat> okay. Nala says it's time to get outside. I think I'll go take care of her while all this is uploading to YouTube. Hey, you guys. I am excited. We're getting close to 25,000 subscribers. Send it out to your friends, family. Get us up to 25,000. That really helps us. It helps um, It helps us pop up in graph and not graphic in uh, YouTube's uh, recommendations for like-minded crafters. Doesn't cost anything um, to subscribe and like. So if you would do that for us, I'd really appreciate it. Now, um, as, uh, that's a little bit too high, as um, as a gift to, to you guys, once we hit 25,000 subscribers, we are going to do a random drawing of our YouTube subscribers. And as long as you're in the United States or its territories, we are going to send you a $100 gift certificate for our shop. So help us make that number. We really appreciate you guys coming and spending time with us here at Scrap and Create. This is Daphne, and as always, thank you so much for your time and attention today. And when I come back, we will do the walkthrough on this fantastic album. Back soon.